Alright, so this week we're going to discuss all the kayak fishing related products I've been using in the last six months that are kind of new to the arsenal. We're going to have some really positive reviews and we're going to have some not so positive reviews. Basically an appropriate time to check in as we're a little over halfway through the fishing year anyway, uh, about six months in. A little bit about myself, I fish probably three to four days a week. I would say four days a week on average. I am a recreational angler. I'm going to speak very highly about a couple things and not so highly about others. So. Stay tuned for this. Okay, so this slide we're going to keep pretty brief. Um, I've owned the Tsunami Shield for one year now. Although I wouldn't make it my primary fishing reel, um, I've owned three of them. One of them blew up on me and I had to get a, a warranty replacement, which was actually a pretty pleasant experience. Uh, Tsunami definitely factors that into their cost of a $99 spinning reel. Some anglers were disappointed with this reel. Uh, overall, it seems like there are some quality control issues if you ask around. But overall, for 100 bucks, I've been pretty happy with the performance of these reels. I've landed lots of nice quality fish on them. Would it be my primary reel choice? No, but for 100 bucks, it's a great backup fishing reel. This right here is a Shimano Stratic 3000. I've added this to my fishing reels maybe about four or five months ago. Um, I've, at, I've landed some very nice quality fish on this reel from Bull Reds, large black drum, 10 pound plus sheep's head. It definitely checks all the boxes in terms of performance. The only issue that is a problem with this reel, and I'm not the only angler with this, the line roller bearings seem to wear out. They're also out of stock on Shimano's website right now. Overall, the Shimano Stratic's a great reel. I mean, the only thing I would do in the future is I'd have a couple of these line roller bearings on you. There's a chance I submerge the reel and salt got in it. We took it apart and tried to get it operational again. It's not working. Otherwise, it's a great reel. I highly recommend it. I've been a big fan of it. Lots of great quality fish caught on it. Just briefly, I've been using the Daiwa Fuego LT for about six months. It's a great lightweight spinning reel. I like the performance of this reel better than the Daiwa BG, which are popular amongst saltwater anglers. I feel like this casts a little better. It's a lot lighter on the hand. The handle's smoother. Definitely a more finesse-oriented reel. This is the second one I've owned. Okay, guys, I've actually blew one up. I did get a warranty replacement on this reel, so this is the second one I'm running. Um, it's a, I can't say enough good things about this reel for 100 bucks. This right here would be a $100 primary reel for me, and that would be a secondary $100 reel. Um, those Shimano Stratics run about 200 bucks. Next, I want to talk about the new Hobie propulsion system. I've gotten to use this 180 drive for about six months now, and I'm going to give you my opinion of it and things that have happened to it. A little bit about my angling. So I surf launch, which means I go out from the open beach into the ocean about once a week. When it comes to surf launching and landing, one thing comes to mind. Sand. Lots of it. Basically, sometimes upon re-entry, you might flip your kayak, and these mirage drives don't fit in the hatches. You'll leash them down so you don't lose it. However, they'll be tumbled around in the surf and lots of sand gets into all of these moving parts. The older Mirage Drive style, this right here is the glide. This is a very simple mechanism to work on. When we used to roll with these, basically getting sand out of this wasn't, wasn't that difficult. Basically, you could just soak it in a bathtub overnight, rinse it out thoroughly, and maybe take it apart and re-grease it and you'd be good to go. And uh, I've had no issues really with sand destroying these Mirage drives. The V2, which was the 2010 to about 2014 drives, and these glide drives. I've had no problem. However, I'm no longer taking this 180 drive out into the ocean. I've learned my lesson. This drive right here, after sucking up a, a lot of sand, it absolutely seized up. The fins were no longer operable. One month later, this chain, well, the, rever the rear chain, and now we're getting into the technical parts, started grinding, for some reason, started grinding into the, the actual sprocket here. I'm really not sure why. And the, the noise it was making was unbearable. It was 100% seizing up and, and totally unusable at that point. I've had issues with the fins opening up and cracking on me. Um, it's been a little bit of a wild ride with these 180 drives. I absolutely love the reverse feature when I'm fishing inshore, especially bottom fishing for stuff like black drum and sheep's head. But at the same time, if I had to pick one drive to own in the future, it would be the, glide, the Hobie Glide drive. Absolutely, if you have the luxury of owning multiple Mirage drives, I would own both. But taking this out into the ocean, sucking up all that sand and all these moving parts, it's gonna happen. You know, that's my overall opinion. Absolutely for inland purposes. As long as your environment isn't as punishing, you probably won't experience too many problems. But um, there's a couple of issues here that I've been bumping into between the fins cracking and opening up, reverse not operating properly, and the, the overwhelming sand issue too. So I've had my winners with the reels. 
the, Mirage, the Hobie Mirage Drive, that 180, I'm not a fan of bringing it into the ocean anymore. I won't land with it in the surf anymore. Um, it, it's just too sensitive to sand. The final thing, and this one is the one that really, this one right here is a big disappointment to me. So I've gone through two Lowrance Hook 4 units, which look similar to this guy. They're a little bit longer. The first one failed me in January in Florida. And while I was waiting for a warranty replacement from Lowrance, I bought another one since I had the plugs and I needed a new unit in an emergency situation so I can get back on the water. That Lowrance unit, I took a wave over the bow from a ferry. It was temporarily submerged and no longer operating. These are things to take into consideration when you're kayak fishing, is that everything will get wet. You will not stay dry and your equipment will not stay dry. You have to give your, you have to always give your equipment doomsday scenarios. Is it, how is it gonna react after it gets submerged? That unit stopped working, wiped all my waypoints from North Carolina. I went into West Marine and I got a, a $200 credit. From there, I ended up removing this Lowrance Mark IV from my Hobie Revolution 16, which I haven't been using as much and put it into the Hobie Outback. However, this product, this product is from like 2008. It's a great simple fish finder with a great chart plotter and GPS. However, this unit is gonna be nearly impossible to find. It took me about six months to get one of these off of eBay, uh, somebody selling one used. So from there I said, okay, I, you know, this, this is gonna be, this unit's gonna be impossible for me to find in the future. I need to get acclimated to a new fish finder unit. So basically, a friend of mine we were fishing in Virginia for Bull Reds, and he used this the side scan feature. And I've always been kind of like, eh, is this really necessary? And I saw its usefulness. So I said, okay, since I need to buy a new unit and put this back in my Hobie Revolution, I ended up getting this guy. And this is the Lowrance Hook 2 7TS. That's a mouthful. So this unit, it's a monster, right? And I'm not, I'm starting to like, it doesn't even feel like kayak fishing anymore that I have this big bulky unit in front of me. You know, I won't be surf launching with this. I'll be stowing it in the hatch, pulling it out, putting it on the actual the head, and then taking it out into the ocean. My main gripe with this, and it's unbelievable, a unit that is 10 years old has a basic map in it that allow me to navigate through the waterways and find deep water and find ledges. This unit, for $500 plus, comes with no maps in saltwater. This unit has no maps installed. It's a $500 plus unit. The sales rep that sold it to me knew who I was, knows I fish in saltwater, and I don't blame him for not knowing. These units come through rotation about a dozen a year. Who can keep up with what exact features are in every single unit. I know it had that side scan feature and it was a Lowrance unit, which most Hobies are built for. So I got on the water the other day in the Noose River looking for Bull Reds and there was no charts on this unit. And I had to actually purchase a, a chart, a chip, a Navionics chip to put into this unit. So that's another 150 bucks. Thankfully, I've been able to run that unit the other day for eight hours on a, on a lithium battery. I'm happy about that. Uh, this is made, this is a Dakota lithium battery. It's from cleanrepublic.com. So I've had no problems running that so far. I'm kind of skeptical if I can get a full 10 hour day out of this one battery. So far, so good. Um, I want the least amount of weight. These lithium batteries weigh probably 50% less than the other batteries. But the big disappointment is to me, you spent $500 on this unit. It's a brand new 2018 unit that has no maps in it. You're gonna to have to spend another $150 on it. This unit is 10 years old. It has a quarter of the features that this, this brand new unit has, and it has maps to navigate with. How crazy is that? By today's standards, this is probably a $70 unit, and it has navigation maps on it. This one has no maps on it. That to me is kind of absurd. It just, it feels kind of absurd. They're always advertised as the hot and best items, but durability is such an important factor that's overlooked. Same thing with these 180 drives, same thing with a fishing reel. Durability to me is very important because durability means I can get back out on the water. The last thing you want to do is have something that you've grown accustomed to your fishing standards 
break on you and you lose a day of fishing. If you're somebody who gets one or two days a week on the water as opposed to having a little bit more of a luxury and flexible schedule, having equipment fail is the worst thing that can happen almost. So when, you're, when your equipment starts failing due to, you know, it got water on it and it was a $500 unit and I'm still waiting for my warranty replacement from Lawrence on my first Elite Series, it's pretty disappointing overall. To summarize reels I've been impressed with, uh, I'm still really impressed with the Daiwa Fuego LT. The Tsunami Shields are not bad for the price, even though some people are still kind of disappointed with them overall. The Shimano Stratix is a great performance reel. The line roller bearing is the only flaw I'm noticing on it, but I fished the hell out of that reel. So just keep that in mind. It's been taking a ton of abuse and it's still holding up. Line roller bearing, only issue. The Hobie Mirage Drive 180s. They're awesome when they're properly functioning. However, the surf landing and launching issue is absolutely something to be considered. I'm not disparaging the Hobie 180 drive. I'm not so trashing it. I'm trying to keep it as objective as possible. These are my experiences with this product. People will say that I'm too rough on my gear. The Mark IV, the hook, the hook series, that absolutely crapped out on me after just getting wet. And now this the Total Scan series, which I'm kind of disappointed in off the bat. Most likely this will be the final Lowrance I own if I continue with issues. Um, I just hope, you know, I, I just shelled out another 200 bucks on maps. I'm already like $750 in the hole with this unit. I did want that Total Scan feature. I thought it was neat. I need to upgrade my units because what I have now will no longer be available. It will break eventually. Even though I got five years out of it, I still have multiple kayaks and I decided let's try a different feature. So let's see if that holds up. Right now I'm expressing some disappointment. I hope that was useful information. I don't like talking about when stuff breaks too much. A lot of people don't really talk about it. They always give the positive. The positive, oh my gear is the best. You can jump on like an unboxing review. It's always everything they unbox is always the most impressive and best product. Stuff breaks when you use it. It's supposed to break eventually. But when is it breaking? How is it breaking? Um, these things are important to take, keep in mind, and that's what we try to keep it. Is, I'm trying to keep it real to a degree, and what I've experienced. So I've been on a Hobie kayak since 2011, kayak fishing since 2008. I feel like I've broken more things in the last two years, though. So, uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we have some fun stuff coming up. I have somebody coming to visit. Somebody pretty special is going to visit this weekend. Uh, lots of fishing videos, good stuff going on. So. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. The reason I did this video, I actually um, had a pretty good redfish video. One of my memory cards got wet and sat in a puddle and I lost the footage. So uh, instead you get a bunch of gear review and opinion. Sorry if that was disappointing. I'll catch up with you guys later.